guess what? I'm going to prepare some oxtails and I'm also going to cut them up, butcher them myself. If you want to see this, stay tuned. Can daddy cook? Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming back, guys. Uh, before I start, uh, this is a collaboration between me and Lyle over at uh, No Hippie Barbecue and Cooking. Uh, this came about because many, many moons ago, that's how this video, well not this video, an oxtail video is how him and I got introduced to each other. He was looking for a video and he found one of mine. <clears throat> Go over there and look at his collaboration video because I think he's gonna tell more of that story. Now, the other reason I'm doing this, not only the collaboration, is because the original video is kind of crafty. <laughs> Hard for me to watch. I'll leave a link to it though. <laughs> so I want to do over. I want to make a better video of the same or a similar recipe. All right, guys. Um, now, what I did was I bought some oxtails that were all one piece, big oxtails, all right? See how beautiful those things are? Kind of weird looking. What I had to do was separate them myself. And I'll show you some footage on that coming up here pretty quick. All right, guys. Um, what I did was I laid them out and I had to find the joints. And I, you need to use a very sharp knife. I use a boning knife, as you can see. And I went between each of the joints. It's a little bit of hunting and pecking. You got to wiggle your life, knife a little bit. Helpful hint, if you hit bone, you're going to have to move your knife until you can get between the vertebrae. Okay. So now that brings us to where we are now. Let me turn to the supporting cast, which looks like this, all right? These here are those oxtails. Now, what I did do with these oxtails in this vacuum <laughs> pack configuration, what I did was I uh, seasoned them. All I used was um, sea salt, fresh cracked black pepper. I used some uh, sason. I'll show you a picture of that. It comes in a little bitty package uh, made by Goya, and I also used some uh, Goya adobo seasoning, not too much. And then I just mixed them all up and I put them inside of my vacuum seal bag, okay, so they can marinate. I let them marinate for about uh, two and a half, three hours. Now that we're at this stage, what I need to do is flour and brown off my oxtails. I'm gonna season my flour, back of supporting cast, flour here. Normally I just use chili powder, but in this case I'm using Chef John Polite's um, dry smoke rub, all right, because this has chili powder in it, amongst other things, all right? So I'm, I'm gonna put that inside of my flour. I'm gonna use some sea salt inside of my flour, some fresh cracked black pepper inside of my flour, and also, this is the adobo I was talking about. I'm gonna put that inside of my flour. From that point, all I'm gonna do is uh, coat all of my oxtails, and then I'm gonna cook them in avocado oil. Now, you can use oil of your choice, I'm using avocado oil this time just because it's a higher smoke point and I want to, all right? Um, so let me get that done and then I'll show you another supporting, on, supporting cast on how we're gonna do the braise. I will be right back. All right, guys, let me get you caught up. I browned these oxtails off. They look beautiful. Check that out. Isn't that nice? 
Yes, indeed. Now, let me tell you what we're gonna do with them. We are gonna go into a braze, all right? Supporting cast for the braze is this right here. <clears throat> rough chop on some carrots, all right? These are the big ones, rough chop on some uh, green onions, all right? Some scallions. Yeah, I always confuse scallions and, uh, and uh, what's the other word I always say? Yeah, I always confuse, <laughs> I always confuse scallions and shallots. Thank you, Tank. <laughs> All right, scallions, rough chop. Uh, rough chop on some celery. I'm gonna put in a couple of sprigs of fresh thyme and a couple of sprigs of fresh rosemary, whole sprigs so I can pluck them out, okay? I'm gonna uh, rough chop some lemongrass. I couldn't find the whole one, so I got these two little stalks. All right, uh, I'm going to top off my pot with all those vegetables and, and, and herbs in there. I'm gonna top it off with some beef broth and some wine. This is beef broth here, and this is also some wine, a red wine, and this happens to be some uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay, I'm gonna top it off. Uh, I'm gonna throw in some garlic, which I forgot to mention, and these right here, which I saved to last, which are leeks. Think about leeks are when they grow and they're, they have a whole bunch of layers and a lot of dirt and grit, sand and dirt gets inside of those uh, individual layers. So what I did here is I cut them up into smaller pieces and all you have to do is wrench them around inside the water and all that grit just falls to the bottom because the leaks float. <laughs> all right guys, so I'm gonna put all of that stuff inside the pot and I'm gonna top it off with the beef broth, like I said, and the wine just to cover or just at the cover. If I need to add some water, I will. At that point, I'm just gonna bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I'm gonna stick it into the oven and let it braise. I'm gonna set the oven to about 375 degrees. Let me get that going. After a two and a half hour braise, I separated the oxtails from the braising liquid. The oxtails look like this. Boy, don't those look good? From that point, I had to get my gravy prepared. You see here, I separated the vegetables, the braising vegetables from the braising liquid by running it through a chinois. A chinois is a very fine, uh, strainer. After I got my liquid separated, 
you see there's a lot of oil, a lot of grease that comes from the oxtails, a lot of fat renders. I use a gravy separator. That's that little plastic funnel looking thing, plastic uh, inverted pitcher looking thing. And what it does, and you'll see this, it allows the oil to float to the top. I can pour off the liquid into a separate container and then discard the oil. Once all of that was done, I returned the liquid and the vegetables to my pot and I used the immersion blender and you see how I emulsified everything. That's how I thickened my sauce. I just blended up all the vegetables after I took out obviously the stalks from the thyme and the uh, stalks from the rosemary and the bay leaves. Everything else got blended up together. Simply from there, all I did was return my oxtails into that liquid and I let it simmer slowly. From this point, all we had to do is plating and a taste test. Woo, water will save your life. Yeah, that's water. <laughs> all right guys, everything came together wonderfully. Everything is beautiful, fantastic, better than I hoped actually. Um, like I said, this video is a do-over and we done done over <laughs> all right the plate looks like this look at this beautiful thing right here isn't that wonderful all right uh, uh everything turned out great even the rice was perfectly al dente let's do a taste test all right guys let's get into this see how tinny this is Oop, i'm trying to get my fingers out of the way oh, we got a hunk of fat in there get out of there look at that look at that look at that Excuse my smacking. Piece of meat, little gravy. Now, this does not fall apart, but it's tender. I don't like it when my oxtails fall apart and disintegrate. Well, here we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that. All right, <clears throat> leave the fork right there. The meat's tender. Just put it off with a fork. I got the wine. I have the gravy. It's thick enough. Oh, I forgot to mention, and I didn't show this in a video. I did add a little bit of a cornstarch slurry just to thicken it up, but that wasn't depicted because it wasn't as thick as I wanted it. So I fixed it that way. But, oh my goodness. I got the wine, I got the background of the aromatics that got blended up in there. It's just an amalgamation, if that's a word, I think I said that right, of all the flavors. I can taste the thyme, I can taste the, uh, uh, the bay leaf, I can taste the garlic. Oh my goodness, I can taste everything. It, was, it turned out fantastic, guys. This is a definite do-over, now that I did it over. <laughs> uh, my girls call me daddy and I cook. Now, don't forget, go over there to see Lyle at No Hippie Barbecue and Cooking. This is a collaboration once again. Uh, his uh, channel's, channel uh, link will be in the description box. And like I said before, he's probably gonna tell you a little bit of story. But like I said before, my girls call me daddy and I still cook. <laughs>
Daddy Cook. Mm. 